In this video, I just want to talk about some free software that I like. This is software that is not only free as in price, but also free as in freedom. I'm not going to be talking about any games, mobile apps, or server applications, and for the most part, I'm not going to be talking about programs everyone knows about, like Firefox and LibreOffice, as I want to mention programs that people maybe haven't heard of. Without further ado, let's go. The first program on the list is Ferdium. Now, I actually found this program through the Linux Lounge, who describes it as the Electron app to kill all Electron apps, which is honestly quite an accurate description. Ferdium is basically a browser designed for web apps, so instead of downloading a bunch of individual programs, you can use all those with one program and switch between them seamlessly within the same window. You can also set up workspaces to group these apps in a certain way. So on one workspace, you might have your casual chat applications, and on another workspace, you might have the apps you use for work like Notion, Nextcloud, and Microsoft Teams. It's also useful if you have multiple accounts for apps that don't allow you to seamlessly switch between accounts. You can replicate this functionality within your browser, but I find Ferdium to be more practical, especially on devices like laptops where you only have one screen. Plus, I also hate having a bunch of tabs open at once. The second program on the list is OBS Studio. Okay, so this is a common program, but I'm mentioning it anyway because I like it. OBS is a program for screen recording and live streaming. I've tried other screen recording programs, especially proprietary ones when I was on Windows, but in my opinion, none of them are as good as OBS. A lot of them have ads, watermarks, time limits, and they try to get you to pay to get rid of it, whereas OBS doesn't have any of this. OBS is overkill for just simple screen recording, and you could argue it's a bit bloated, but that's because it has quite a lot of features, not because it's bloated for the sake of it. You can easily set keybinds for things like muting your audio, starting and stopping the recording, and most notably changing scenes. Scenes are basically what the viewer sees. OBS allows you to show different types of media in layers, so this could be your desktop, your webcam, the output from a capture card, text, images, and you can layer them based on the scene. So you might have one scene that's your desktop and your webcam, while another scene might just be your webcam. And there are also extensions to show things like the chat, but that's more for streamers and I don't really stream. I should do. Another feature of OBS is the virtual camera, which is where your computer will detect the output from OBS as a webcam, and you can then use that for things like video calls, which is quite useful. The third program on the list is Calibre. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but Calibre is a program for managing and reading ebooks. I posted a video last Saturday about digital minimalism, and I mentioned that I have an Amazon Kindle, but it isn't registered with Amazon, the device is always on airplane mode, and I don't buy my books from Amazon. Instead, I download the ebook from the internet, and then I use Calibre to convert the book to a Kindle compatible format, and then I can send it to the device. I can also use this software to add any missing metadata like the cover, the language, or the author's name. You can also use it for non-Kindle devices like the Kobo e-readers. If you're wondering where you can actually get the books from without pirating them, there's a cool website called manybooks.net. Most of the books on this site are free, though it's largely because they're older books which are now in the public domain, which might seem like a downside, but I actually quite like these old books. For newer books, you can use a site called ebooks.com. Most of these books cost money, but you're supporting the publisher without supporting Amazon. The fourth program is VS Codium. Visual Studio Code is one of the most popular IDEs out there, and while it does run on Linux, there's a much better option, VS Codium, which basically removes all the Microsoft telemetry and branding. The UI is basically the same as VS Code, and I think the only noticeable difference is that some Microsoft-specific extensions don't work, though most other VS Code extensions should work just fine. The fifth program is Ocular. This is the default PDF tool for KDE Plasma, but you can run this on any desktop environment and it's also available on Windows. So if you need to read, add annotations to, or sign a PDF, this does the job. Even if you're a Windows user, I'd recommend using this instead of Adobe Acrobat or Foxit Reader, because Ocular doesn't require an account and doesn't lock basic features behind a paywall. It's a WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. The sixth program is KeyPassXC. Hopefully you don't need me to tell you that you shouldn't use the same password for every website. While a lot of people consciously know this, 
In practice, many people will cycle through a few semi-decent passwords rather than having a strong and unique password for every website. KeePassXC is an offline password manager. So basically, it's a program that stores your login information in an encrypted file. You can either make up a password or have KeePass generate a password for you. The KeePass database is encrypted with a password you can remember. But if you want to be extra cautious, you can use a key file or a hardware device like a YubiKey. There's also a mobile client called KeePass DX. The reason I recommend KeePass over online password managers is because not only do online password managers require an account and an internet connection, you're also trusting some company to look after your passwords and hoping they don't get hacked or anything. However, you can use KeePass like an online password manager using a program called SyncThing, which will synchronize the database across your devices. So in other words, if I add a password on my laptop, I don't have to manually add it on my desktop and vice versa. The seventh program is Edex UI. This isn't the most practical program, it just looks cool if you want to feel like a hacker. In a way, you can sort of use it like a desktop environment, as it has a built-in terminal, and you can also use it to view photos and videos, so it's not completely useless, I guess. And the final program is OpenRGB. I made a full video about this, but if you're looking for a way to control your RGB lighting on Linux, then OpenRGB is what you're looking for. I think this program is useful if you have products from different companies, say an ASUS motherboard, a Corsair liquid cooler, a Razer mouse, and a Logitech keyboard. You can just use one fairly lightweight program instead of a bunch of bloated ones. That's all for today's video, thank you all for watching, and until next time, cheerio.